Hello everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey. And in today's video, we're going to be covering non-Mendelian genetics 101, so let's do this. What is non-Mendelian genetic inheritance? And this is basically any pattern of inheritance in which traits do not segregate in accordance with Mendel's laws. So if we take a look at Mendelian genetics versus non-Mendelian genetics, in Mendelian genetics, it's the way in which genes and their corresponding traits are passed from parents to their offspring by means of dominant and recessible alleles. So this is where you get that uppercase letter and then you get your lowercase letter. And we talk about homozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant, and then homozygous recessive. But if you look at non-Mendelian genetics, Patterns of inheritance in which traits are not passed from parents to their offspring by means of dominant and recessive alleles. So there are other factors involved with non-Mendelian genetics. And Mendelian genetics involve only two alleles, while non-Mendelian genetics involve multiple alleles or polygenes. So you ain't going to have more than two alleles involved in non-Mendelian genetics. And then in Mendelian genetics, the two alleles of a gene are either dominant or recessive. So this is pretty straightforward. So like I said earlier, this is where you get that homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and then homozygous recessive. But then non-Mendelian genetics, the two alleles of a gene are neither dominant nor recessive. So this is where factors come into play like incomplete dominance or codominance. And then if you notice in Mendelian genetics, the phenotypic outcomes can be predetermined theoretically. So you can predetermine this by putting together a Punnett square. And looking at the Punnett square is going to give you your phenotypic ratios and also your genotypic ratios of offspring. But if you notice in non-Mendelian genetics, the phenotypic outcomes can be different from theoretically predicted outcomes. So it's very difficult to predict or very difficult or challenging to predict a person's eye color or their hair color or their height. And then examples of Mendelian genetics include the law of dominance, law of segregation, and of course the law of independent assortment. While examples of non-Mendelian genetics include incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple alleles, polygenic traits, and sex-linked inheritance. Let's take a look at incomplete dominance. And this is when one allele is not completely dominant over another allele. And when there are two different genes that are considered dominant, sometimes they can blend. So let's take a look at this. So we look at this homozygous dominant red flower that is crossed with this homozygous dominant white flower. Flower. If you notice, the flower, the resulting offsprings are neither red nor white, but the resulting offsprings are actually a blend between these red and white crosses. So if you notice, we have pink flowers that have been produced. So neither trait or neither allele was dominant over the other, and these alleles actually blended together to create these pink flowers. Now let's take a look at codominance. In codominance, the phenotypes produced by both alleles are completely expressed. So that means you actually see both alleles expressed. So let's take a look at this picture on the left. If you notice, here are, here's a pink flower right here crossed with a white flower. But if you notice in the resulting offspring, you can actually see the pink and the white alleles expressed phenotypically in the resulting offspring. And then let's take a look at the difference between in incomplete dominance and codominance. So if you notice, here's a red flower crossed with a white flower. If you notice, neither the red or the white is showing in the resulting offspring. So this is that incomplete dominance right here, where there's actually a blending of both alleles. But then if you notice in codominance, we have this red flower crossed with this white flower. If you notice, both traits are showing. So here's that red right here, and here's that white right here. So that's the difference between incomplete dominance and codominance. And incomplete dominance is actually a blending of the two alleles or traits. But in codominance, you actually have both traits actually displayed phenotypically in the resulting offspring. Now it's time for a quick check for understanding. And you're going to use your notes and knowledge gained through watching the video to determine if the following are co-dominance or incomplete dominance. You have one minute to complete the following check for understanding and you can go ahead and pause the video now. Now let's talk about multiple alleles. And this is where there are three or more alternative forms of a gene. So a great example of this would be blood type. And the ABO blood group is a main example of multiple alleles in humans. It is determined by a gene with three alleles. So we have A, B, and then I, which is going to lead to blood type O. 
And there are three forms of the gene or alleles that control the blood type that you will have, which we just discussed. You have two alleles, one that comes from your mom and one that comes from your dad, which are referred to as your genotype. And the inheritance of the alleles A and B are co-dominant, meaning that if the allele is present, it's going to be expressed, and type O is going to be recessive. So let's take a closer look at this. So say if I receive an allele A from mom and an allele A from dad, or say if I receive an allele A from either one of my parents and I received an I. Remember, type A is going to be dominant over the I because the I is going to be recessive. And this means that both genotypes produce the A protein or type A. So let's look at this. So that means this individual will have blood type A. They can donate blood to A or AB and they can receive blood from A or O. Say if I received an allele, a B allele from my mom and a B allele from my dad, or say if I receive a B allele from one of my parents and an I allele from the other parent. Remember, type B or B is going to be dominant over I since I is recessive. This means that both genotypes produce the B protein or type B. So I would have blood type B and I can donate blood to B or AB and I can receive blood from B or O. And then if I receive an A from mom and an A and a B from dad, that means this genotype produces the A and B protein or type AB. So that means I would have type AB blood, which means I can donate blood to A or B and I can receive blood from AB or O. So type AB blood is considered the universal receiver because you can receive blood from any one of the blood types. And then lastly, say if I receive an I from mom and an I from dad, this genotype produces no protein, so it would be type O. So remember, this one is recessive. So let's take a look at blood type O. That means I can donate blood to A, B, A, B, and O because O blood type O is considered the universal donor, and I can receive blood from only blood type O. Let's move on to polygenic traits. And these are inherited characteristics where two or more genes work together or blend together to give you one trait. So some examples would be hair color, eye color, and height. So let's take a look at this dihybrid cross right here. So if you notice this sperm, look at the gene combinations that's coming from the sperm or coming from the dad right here. And then if you look across the top, look at the gene combinations that's coming from the mom. So if you notice, depending upon the gene combinations, a person can have any type of eye color based upon the combination of genes that are put together. So a person can have black eyes, they can have brown eyes, light brown eyes, or blue eyes, or light blue eyes, and it just basically depends on the combination of genes that are being combined together. Let's take a look at some key differences between multiple alleles and polygenic traits. In multiple alleles, there are more than two forms of a gene. In polygenic traits, there are going to be two or more genes that work together to give you one trait. So this is where we get that blending from. And then in multiple alleles, it's going to determine a trait by complete dominance or co-dominance. But in polygenic traits, it's going to determine a trait by co-dominance or incomplete dominance. So this is what I was saying earlier by having the blending of the genes or the alleles. And then in multiple alleles, homologous crossing over does not occur, so this does not lead to more genetic variety. But if you notice in polygenic traits, homolog homologous crossing over can occur, which leads to more genetic variety. So let's take a look at this. If you notice in blood types, you're either going to have type A, type B, type AB, or type O. But if you look at polygenic traits like eye color, hair color, or height, notice that these many different combinations of alleles or genes can lead to many different outcomes. So say for eye color, you can have black eyes, brown eyes, hazel eyes, dark blue, light blue, green eyes. There are so many different combinations that you can have that leads to more genetic variety. Let's take a deep dive into sex-linked traits. And these are traits that are carried on the X or Y chromosome. And traits on the Y chromosome are found only in males and are passed directly from father to son. Remember, females do not have a Y chromosome. So a male is going to have an X and a Y chromosome. And it's, if the father has that trait, it's going to be passed directly to his son since his son has a Y chromosome as well. And then recessive sex-linked traits are more common than dominant sex-linked traits. And males are more likely to have sex-linked conditions than females due to having only one X chromosome. 
most females can be carriers for a certain trait. So let's take a look at this. A female is gonna have an X, but she's gonna have an additional X to actually mask or cover that trait. So she won't have that condition more times than not. But if you notice, here's an X right here for a male and a Y right here, and he only has one X. So if the, mo if the mother carries that trait, then it's gonna be passed on to the son because he only has one X and doesn't have an additional X to mask or cover that trait. So let's look at this Punnett square right here and we'll look at sex linked traits by looking at hemophilia. So a normal man marries and has children with a female who is a carrier for hemophilia. So a normal man, he's gonna have that big H that stands for normal and then he's gonna have this Y right here. But he marries a female who is a carrier for hemophilia. So she's gonna have this X but she's gonna have that lowercase H since she's a carrier. And then she's gonna have an additional X. So now let's do our cross. We have our X with our big H, and then we have our X with our lowercase h. So this is going to be a female who is going to be a carrier of the hemophilia trait. And then here's our next cross. Here's our X with our lowercase h, and then here's our Y. So this is gonna be a male who's going to have the condition or who's going to have hemophilia Y because he doesn't have an additional X right here. And then let's do our next cross. We have an X with a big H, and then we have an X. So this is gonna be a normal female who does not have the hemophilia trait and who is not a carrier for the hemophilia trait. And then here's our X and Y, and this is gonna be a normal male who is not going to have the hemophilia condition. So chances of having a hemophilia, hemophilia child is going to be a 25% chance, so one out of four. Uh, the chances of having a hemophiliac son, remember we have two sons, so it's gonna be a one out of two, which means that's gonna be a 50% chance of having a hemophiliac son. And then having a hemophiliac daughter, our daughter's 0% is going to be that number because neither of the daughters have hemophilia, but one of the daughters does carry the trait. So let's take a look at some more information on sex-linked inheritance. And the X chromosome may contain alleles for the following. So it could be hemophilia, color blindness, baldness, or muscular dystrophy. And these X-linked recessive disorders predominantly affect males. And let's take a closer look at why. So if you notice, a female has an additional X chromosome to mask or cover that trait. So that would make her more likely a carrier for it. But if you notice, this male only has one X chromosome. So if the mother has it on her X chromosome, on and she has a son, then the son is going to inherit that trait and he's going to have that condition because he only has one X chromosome. Let's take an even deeper dive to discuss or show why sex-linked traits predominantly affect males. So like we stated before, females have two X chromosomes, so the X-linked recessive diseases will not affect them. So look at this female right here. Notice her phenotype is going to be normal, but she has two X's. But now let's look at hemophilia. So she has this additional X to mask and cover that trait. So she won't have hemophilia, but she'll be a carrier for it. Same thing with color blindness. So she's a carrier for the trait, but she doesn't have it or have the condition herself. And then same thing for baldness. She'll be a carrier for the trait for baldness, but won't have baldness herself. Why? Because she has an additional X chromosome. But however, males only have one X chromosome. So if you look right here, here's a normal male right here. But then if you look at this male right here, he has the hemophilia condition. Why? Because he only has one X chromosome, so he inherits that trait. And then this male right here is going to have color blindness. Why? Once again, because he only has one X chromosome. And then here's that uh, male right here, and he's going to have baldness. Why? Because he only has one X. And see, he's balding right here. And see, I have a ball head myself, so thanks, Mom, for that. Now it's time for our check for understanding. You may use your notes and an launch track game from watching this video to answer the following questions. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, check us out at our website at www.fathersoninnovations.com for more content and curriculum. And also, check out our brand new online courses for biology and physical science at www.fathersoninnovations.com forward slash courses. And these courses are directly aligned to the Georgia Milestones to help your students to be proficient and distinguished on the Georgia Milestones assessment. And lastly, check out our app, which is FSI Courses, which you can download in the Google Play Store and in the Apple Store as well. And make sure you have an awesome, fantastic, and peaceful day, and we will see you next time.
Peace. Peace.